Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. So it is officially what's in the bag season. We done mine last week. We're going to do what's in the bag, what's on the bag, what's around the bag, because there's a whole lot to talk about here. Yeah, there's a, we did one, I guess, last fall. Yeah. Um, I've updated some things, some things have kind of stayed. Um, definitely some things are going to be changing in the next little while. So yes. we're just kind of going with it right now. Liz, yeah, let's do a current status because we, we do have some plans to, I wouldn't say overhaul, but it's been a long time since you really Take, took a deep deep dive into 14 clubs that are fit for you. Yeah, so I've been doing it all on my own lately, um, just based on feel. Yeah. So I've barely even looked at numbers for a lot of the stuff that's currently in here. Um, a lot of it's just been like, I like the feel of it, like the look of it, let's stick it in there. And that's so, not a bad way for you to do it, because because you are such a feel player, that's kind of sure. how you play the game is, is by feel. So when you get a club like your cheeky little seven wood with the Oban Revenge, like you played the Kyoshi for the longest time, you had a feel for that, but you know, I said, how do you like the adventure? Like, feels fine. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're, you're cool with it. You take a lot of the responsibility for the shot shaping and the ball flight. Like, I would say for me, I'm a little bit more OCD, picky on, on feels and flights and yeah, changes yeah. and stuff. You're pretty good to kind of hit a couple, calibrate yourself, then make it work like that. Yeah, I think you said it there with the calibration. Like, I'm, I, if it doesn't feel good right away, I almost manipulate my swing to yeah. make it feel good. Totally. Um, it's been like that forever. I was saying earlier, I can pretty much use anything, and mm -hmm. I find that I can kind of find a way to make yeah. it work. With that being said, I know there's probably certain things. I know wedges are really important for bounces and grinds and sure. stuff. I'd love to um, be probably something that's high up there just because I do hit a lot of stock wedge shots, yeah. flighted wedges and stuff. Um, everything else is kind of up for uh, discussion to try to Love it. take a look at. Okay, top of the bag. Uh, we've got a new 2022 head in the Stealth Plus, nine degrees, righty sleeve on hire, turned down to seven, toe weight. Both of us pretty much play driver the same way. This has been good? Yeah, so I was using the uh, original Sim, original the OG Sim, Sim yeah. um, and I absolutely loved it. It was the best driver I ever hit. I've always been a tailor-made driver guy, um, yeah. pretty much since I met you when I was using the R1. I, I think I've used- The R1. The R1 was in the we bag forever. Yeah, with the R1, yeah, yeah we? definitely. Um, tailor-made is the, the one driver company that I tended to stay with. I just like the feel, I like the look. I've tried every other company, yeah. even up to this year. You tried to get me to hit that Cobra one. I just I absolutely hated it from yeah. the way it looked. Just in my opinion, it's a great driver. It just didn't work for me. Why do you think we are that way? Because I'm the same. And, and people kind of give us a bit of a hard time, like, oh, tailor made promotion. It's not a tailor promotion. No, it's promotion. not. I'm going to use whatever works. So whatever works. People don't understand that. It's like TaylorMade's a great company that's helped yeah. me out a ton. And, and they take great they care take of us. They take great care of me in terms of getting me the stuff I want, but I'm a free agent when it comes totally. to picking my equipment. Yeah, so. Yeah. Tell me a driver for whatever reason, it does exactly what I want. I think the look of it is so important. Driver, I'm a huge stand over it. If it looks good in my eyes, then it's, uh, it kind of performs well. So yeah. for whatever reason, I didn't like the Sim 2 last year. I never switched to yeah, it. Yeah, um, yeah. I tried to like it, didn't like it. Sent me the Stealth, and then I was really happy that they put the weight tra or track back in, and it's been really, really that good. That was a big part for you, wasn't it? Huge. Yeah, yeah big, big huge. part. Um, so yeah, seven degrees, weight in the toe. Shaft, Acra RPG, uh, 472 M5 Plus, big boy shaft, proper gun show. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> I actually found that kicking around TXG one day. Yeah. Um, and kind of started monkeying around with it probably about a year ago now, and it's stayed in since. So, I I mean, again, I don't even know if there's better options out there, because to be honest, I, yeah. I don't think I've done an actual driver fit for a long time. I just go based on what I like the, the look of and the feel of, and. It, uh, it's been working, so I haven't changed it. This will be cool to dive into this because obviously, extremely stiff, guys. This was this was the shaft that was uh, built as a prototype, actually, for Ryan Palmer. Um, this was in an all-black version uh, when we gave it into Gary Woodland's hands at the 2017 Canadian Open, and you know he's stuck with it ever since. And, and this literally is the exact same spec that he was in, yeah. the 472 M5 Plus, which is kind of like a double X. So it's it's heavy and it's super stiff. So I'm I'm kind of I know you I know how good you uh, hit it. I've played with you and seen it, but I wonder what else is out there for you when it comes to the driver. Yeah. If, if we can kind of you know get a little bit more sort of maybe speed or or kind of more dynamic motion potentially with the shaft, but this will be an interesting one to to uh, play around with. Multi compound plus four standard size Built needs a change. A yeah, no, I can almost see the Come shaft on. on my thumb there. Um, <laughs> it kind of feels nice. It's like a training grip at this point. Yeah, I know, I know. It's perfect. <clears throat> it does the trick. 
So before we get into fairway woods, well, you've got mini driver in there as well. You've got yeah, a, a so Cooper for me, I, I, I find that um, my big problem with driver is I get very up on it. Yep. So by using that club, teeing it super low, it, it almost has gotten me to shout or um, to steepen things up a little sure. bit, which is not a common problem for people to have. Yeah. But for me, when I find a tighter golf course that I want to just get it in play, that thing's been awesome. So I use it a lot of practice over at Bear Mountain out in BC there. A lot of tight fairways, very penal if you mm -hmm. miss. Um, I find I don't give up a ton of distance with it and it, it's still a little lower flight, a little easier for me to control. Maybe it kicks up the spin a little bit and it's uh, it's been really, really useful for tight golf courses. So Mac is saying that he doesn't really give up much distance over his seven degree driver with an 11 and a half degree mini driver. Guys, that's a lot to do with the way the head is designed with this uh, with this guy, with the center of gravity being forward. We always tell you guys not to just pay attention to the loft in order to find the right ball flight. You have to know the DNA of the head. Obviously, know the, the sort of shaft makeup and how that relationship works with the head. And, you know, that's cool to see that there's a four and a half degree separation between driver and mini driver. And really, you're not giving up much distance because of the way this is set up. Yeah, it's not enough where I would notice it. Honestly, yeah. I could probably, obviously, if I step into a normal driver, it's going to go a little further, but right. a stock driver on the golf course where I'm trying to hit a fairway, yeah. generally, I mean, the numbers are pretty comparable and I find I can control a little bit more. So honestly, I found that I'd probably go 50-50 with drivers right now. I right. love this one and I love this one. It right. just depends on the golf course. Shaft in there, guys, uh, Fujikura uh, 2.0 tour spec, a little higher balance point, pretty tip stiff. A shaft that I would really consider would be if we do some testing with Mac, a type of profile that I think would work really, really nice for you. So um, good to know that you've, you've kind of settled really well with yeah. that one. <laughs> it's back. Yeah, so uh, obviously um, you fit me into the tailor We're still waiting for it to come. Obviously yep. supply chain shafts and all that a little behind, but yep. friends over at Acker were able to send me a little replacement shaft. I just stuck it in there again, just on a whim. Never had tried that shaft before. I had to go back to that head. I just, it's got too much uh, sentimental value to me. So it's staying in the bag for the time being. We threatened the graveyard with the uh, the Tour Edge Exotics XCG 3 wood, but it's, I don't think this thing will ever die. It's immortal. Yeah, and point. honestly, I, I have an extra one at home in case it does die. I don't tell anyone that, but it's brand new. I got it for about $28 off um, a used Beautiful. manufacturer. And it's there if I ever need it. But in terms of what that club wants or does for me, yeah. it's, it's pretty awesome, so. Um, Acra FX 2.0 300 FM5, which is about high 80s in the gram weight. So probably cut length is probably coming out to somewhere around kind of 87, 88 grams. Pretty heavy. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a stick yeah. for sure. It weighs a little bit, but um, again, I like the feel and the shaft's been really, really good. Love it. Cheeky little seven wood time. Yeah. Talk to me. So this um, seven wood's kind of a new addition to the bag. I had an old Adams hybrid that would have been in my last What's in the Bag with you. Um, that was in my bag forever, but I was finding some problems with just launch. So got this in the bag, uh, I guess it would have been a couple months ago now, and it's honestly become my favorite club by far. I yeah. use it every chance I get. Um, just recently put the Revenge shaft in it. Uh, it's been really, really good. Again, I like that kind of heavier feel in a wood shaft, mm -hmm. especially for just what I'm trying to do with ball flights and stuff. So it's been uh, my favorite club for sure. And this is such an interest what's in the bag because you've with me last week, we're going through uh, a, a shaft setup that is matched, right? We talked about the TPT 16 low series, the driver, the fairway with the hybrid. With Mac here, we are, we're talking about opposing shaft EI profiles. We've got the stiffest of the stiff with the most tip stiff. We've got something that's super, super tip soft. The reason you feel like this is, uh, you know, pretty heavy and stuff, very, very stiff and heavy under the handle exactly. on the Revenge. And, and when we do that, what we're trying to do with, or what shaft manufacturers are trying to do, when you make a part of the shaft stiff, then the energy will move into the part of the shaft that is softer and that, sh that part of the shaft will give a little bit more. So with a shaft like this, that has a much, much stiffer butt section and relatively stiff midsection, what that basically means is all the energy is, is basically concentrated into the tip. And if they soften the tip up, it makes it excessively deflect. Right. And that's what the Revenge is. That's the, one of their kind of high launch shafts. Back in the original series with the, the blue version that a lot of you will be familiar with, the Oban Devotion, you've got the Revenge uh, as the sort of fairy wood option to the, the, the tip stiff Devotion. So cool to see a real kind of mixture of tip stiff, 
tip stiff, tip stiff, tip soft, and then balance points moving around. You know, Af Acra FX, very low balance point. Fujikura 2.0, very high balance point, little higher balance point. Like, it's a little, it's a little it's all over the place. Yeah, so, and I think that's something that I would like to dabble into is actually doing a proper yeah. kind of fit and go fit through if I'm maybe completely crazy for these decisions I've made and see if there's stuff that actually performs a little bit better. Yeah. Again, I am good at adapting to making a shaft feel good based on just changing swing or, yeah, or yeah. manipulating. So um, it'll be cool to kind of do some testing and just see if I'm lacking anything with the current setup up top. So one thing that comes to mind for me when we're talking about sort of your creativity and your ability to manipulate the golf club for it to do what you want. You know, within a few shots, and, and we obviously hit many shots when we're trying certain uh, head and shaft options. For someone like Mac, I might be inclined to turn the screen off and not actually allow you to visually see what's kind of going on and, and ask you to go through the process. So, okay, hit me your draw, hit me your straight one, hit me your fade, and then I'll, I'll digest what's coming up on the data and then let it, let you not override the numbers. Yeah. Then that way, you know, you're you're probably having a little bit of a truer test of of, uh, of the club itself and what it does for you when it's not being influenced by your insane levels of fuel. Yeah, no, it definitely makes sense because I know um, that's exactly what I do. I just manipulate. Of course. So I see one ball flight and then I immediately yeah. adjust it by making a, a change to the swing instead definitely. of just repeating it and, and seeing if it's actual product of poor equipment or mm -hmm. just a, a swing flaw. Yeah. So I think, guys, likelihood is you, you'll see that one coming up in the next little while for sure. Um, okay, into the irons. We are four through nine iron. Yeah. In the Callaway Apex uh, MB. Absolutely gorgeous. I know you've loved these. You've had these for, for quite some time. 2018. Yeah, yeah. So I've had those. Again, I'm, I learned to play golf on blades. I used Mira blades pretty much my entire kind of amateur and when I was playing professionally. And then got those in 2018, right when they came out. Mm -hmm. um, I just like how simple they are. Not a lot of offset, smaller head shape. Um, I have, so I've got, as you know, a West Coast bag and the East Coast bag. Yeah. I have the P7 MBs out on the West Coast, these ones here. Right. Um, I'm not over, overly particular on what iron I'm using as long as it doesn't have a lot of offset and it's a blade style. Yeah. So um, again, I never was fit for those. I just kind of yeah. put myself into them and they've worked. So. And I remember you were a Callaway staffer at one point up yep. at uh, Wooden Sticks, Wooden Sticks and, and that was when you had these in the bag. I remember you, yeah. you put those in and you changed out of the X100s that you've used forever. And yeah. You actually really liked the KBS, uh, the S-Tape. I would say this, yeah, I was an X100 tour issue forever. Ever. I think that was the, only, the first set of clubs you fit me into and then I stayed with it. And I still do love them. Yeah but I honestly think I like the feel of those just a little bit more. Sure. I, think. I, don't, I, don't, I don't find them as rigid almost. I don't know what the feel is with mm -hmm. it. It's, I don't find them as um, damaging on missed shots. I don't feel as like bulky almost. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the feel I have. I don't know how accurate that yeah. is, but it's just the feel I have with them. Yeah, I mean, S-Taper is, is kind of designed to feel a little bit more on the lively side. So you've kind of got the stability of a C-Taper with the feel of a KBS Tour built into an S-Taper. So something that's designed not to kick the ball, you know, too right. high, um, but still be pretty stable at the same time. So I think it's a great shaft and something that meshes that stability and feel at the same time. Yeah, I love them. why you they're, like it. They're awesome. Um, okay, into your 46. Yeah. So I have a Vokey SM8 X100 shaft. Yep. Um, I've used it kind of for a while now and just it does its purpose and I like it, so I haven't changed it. Simple, simple stuff. Yeah. 52, 56 are both MG3 mill grind tail made uh, wedges. I mean, this is crazy custom few custom ferrules, yeah, custom yeah, shafts. I know, I know. We, uh, Mikey just put those in there when he was building them. He kind of... Uh, so you I just handed them, the heads I, over yeah, to like, do something. Yeah, do make these look cool. So You've done a good that was job. the idea. And then Acra, um, I, I thinking of going back to, I went briefly to Acra iron shafts and I really liked them. It was actually after my wrist surgery that I went to them and I kind of wanted to experiment with them in the wedges and they've been a really good feel. I find that they're like soft, but they're they're heavy and I like that weight. That's, that's important for me. So yeah. Um, yeah, really nice. Big fan of those. One uh, one cheeky little nugget on uh, on those wedge shafts. So 130 grand. They're called I Wedge Tour uh, by Acra. Pre Acra acquisition, True Temper, obviously S400 Dynamic Gold S400 is the most popular wedge shaft in golf. Um, used by so so many players all over you know the the world tours and in the amateur game. 
And Acro, with the ability to manipulate graphite the way that you can, basically said, well, let's make a graphite S400. Yeah, exactly. And that's literally to the, the profile. I mean, we couldn't say that that's what that was back, you know, before True Temper actually bought Acro, but we can now say it because they're part of the same family. This is a graphite S400. So the people who are maybe coming out of steel, moving into graphite for whatever issue, whether it be they just like the feel or whether it's trying to protect injuries, and they maybe were historically in S400s, you want to gravitate towards these eye wedge tour shafts. They're, uh, they feel phenomenal, they, they fly phenomenal, they're really, really good stuff. Yeah, so when I messaged Acura, kind of seeing what options they had in wedges, they kind of told me like, what do you use currently? And I mm. said, X100, S400. Yeah. Um, they're like, we can kind of give you something that's very comfortable. You can tip it a little bit to make it feel a little stiffer if yep. you want, which I like. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a kind of a experiment that has turned into sticking in the bag. And I can't see myself changing out of it. I really, really like the feel of them. So 12 degrees of bounce, standard bounce, and uh, 9 degrees on the 52. 56 is 12 and 52 is 9. Very, very standard stuff. Um, yeah, I've always been, I mean, that's one thing I think I can benefit from is doing a pro, again, wedge options with lefty is a bit difficult. A lot of is, companies yeah, don't make right. a lot of um, bounces. So that's going to be something that I really want to get into. Um, and yeah, the high toe, I've been using the high toe since the high, original high toe came yeah, out. This is Gen um, 2. I never use, use it for full swings unless I absolutely have to. It's a really just kind of changed short game for me. It's been, um, mm. I actually enjoy hitting little shots with it. You can get so kind of creative with it. Uh, I just find the versatility of it is uh, hard to beat. And then I put the same shaft as the other wedges. Right, in it. same thing. So 10 degrees of bounce in this one for Mac, but has a nice little sort of uh, heel relief, toe relief, trail edge relief. So it gives you lots and lots of versatility. Um, obviously high toe to, to kind of offset the, the long hosel, move the mass higher and towards the toe. It's good for relocating CG back to where we want it. But going by the wear pattern in this, you could probably just use a, a normal wedge based on the fact you hit everything right in the middle of the yeah, club. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. Pretty yeah, good stuff. It's uh, it's probably my favorite, one of my favorite clubs in the bag, definitely. Just notice that in there. Yeah, a little length difference in that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, we'll dive into that. <laughs> we'll ask Mikey, what I did you know. do? Okay. Um, the wand. Yes. So. Um, this is new from last week. This. Yeah. So, well, because I have my West Coast, my East Coast oh, okay. bag going on, okay. so I. Um, so that's nice. the gamer. Um, so that's a custom Coggin design. Um, he makes them in his little workshop at his house. Makes unbelievably good stuff. He can pretty much make any head shape. You can just send him a drawing of a, an idea you have and he can kind of create it. That's um, sick. It's cool. So his logo, yeah, it's got a little mustache on the uh, the ghost there. He's, uh, he's He can do anything. He can mill the face, he can put inserts, he can do literally anything. That's wild. Um, and he's just an unbelievably good dude. So. Um, I kind of reached out to him, I guess, winter time or just start of, actually end of end of last year, um, seeing what he could do. And he made me that up. And then I just put this in because I thought it looked cool. I've never actually looked at the numbers. I just said it was kind of looked cool. So Mikey stuck that in there for me. And the Garson grip. Yeah. Um, I can't see myself ever using anything other than a Garson quad tour on any putter. It just feels really, really good in my hand. So. These are these are getting seriously popular at TXG, guys. The the Garson Quad Tour, a uh, little bit of a flatter uh, front to it, just really nicely sits in the lifelines uh, and in the hands. Very 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 popular for us right now. Um, full toe hang for you. Little, let's see how much we got. Half a shaft of offset. Um, a feel feel putter. You're yeah. you're a kind of open stance. You know, fuel exactly. putter. Yeah, so I'm so not technical with putting. My stance is always changing. So I kind of, I mean, I don't look at technique a lot with putting. I just look at good speed control and yeah. let the rest deal with itself. Good green reading, good speed control. Yeah. If the stroke looks like kind of garbage, then it is what it is as long as the ball is getting close to the hole. Yeah. Um, again, that's probably not the best motto for most people to have, but my putting generally is is okay. Like, I'm, I'm not much of a three putter. I, mm. I make quite a few, the ones I should make, I find. Um, and I just kind of enjoy the look of that putter, so yeah. I use it. Max a calibrator, right? So you're getting this. So all the way we're talking about, you know, certain clubs and not really knowing what's going on, but like he doesn't really know why his 50, his 60 is a little bit shorter, but he loves it. Like Mac is a calibrator. You give him something, he'll figure it out. If you kind of keep him within the parameters of being right, you'll figure it out. And um, vibing and slinging. There you go. Vibing yeah, and slinging. Yeah, you know, uh, completely custom. It's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right, so that's what's that's what's 
in the bag. Yes. What's on the bag? This, we've got to talk about this. That's my uh, my custom uh, Tupac towel. <laughs> That's so good. It serves as my uh, my uh, tripod as well, my, my sling nest here, let we call it, and I prop That's my phone best. up when I'm doing my videoing, so I keep that one nice and clean. I was at the golf course the other day, forgot the tripod, always sits in the bag, must have left it TXG, desperate to take a few swings, ended up yeah, rolling it, up you the just towel. roll it up, stick the phone right in here, and uh, little sling rag. Yeah, yeah, you, off you go. So about your sling rag. It's easy, easy peasy. Um, golf bag, minimal golf bag. Um, absolutely love this brand. The guys over there, um, it's a little brand out of California, and their stuff is really, really cool. We kind of went over it briefly yeah. in the fall, if you saw that video, but um, I just got the black one. It's got all the built-in gear here, speaker. Um, it's got power cords to charge the speaker. It's got a solar Wild. panel. And then it's also got the uh, iPhone charger as well built into the bag. So good for me with my phone constantly being on when I'm playing videoing and stuff. Sure. I, I need that yeah. little extra boost. So probably my favorite bag I've ever owned. Nice and light. It's uh, It's been really good. Insane how, like, how much this is. I mean, I've, I've been calling this things a lot this recently, but this is a Swiss Army knife when it comes to, our go to the golf bag. Like, it has so many functions yeah. to it. You know, it's it's a great looking bag, first and foremost, but the little solar panel, the phone charger, the speaker, the the little sort of uh, compartment on this side to hold your phone. It's, it's literally a little phone holder yeah. in order to, if you want to film and you don't have a, you know, little, uh, little rag, uh, you know, anything like that, uh, the Nest, then... You know, it, that's a great option on that side as well. Yeah, and it's a uh, it's really cool. I think um, I think it's been pretty popular since like it's starting hanging in the mainstream a bit, and it's a good price point as well. For sure. Um, Ball, I've been TP5X or TP5X picks. Yeah. Um, I've been using them since they restructured that ball last year, I guess what it was. So. And are you using the track, the alignment track on it? Uh, I do. Yeah, for I putting? use. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a alignment track for sure. So. Um, Really like that ball. Again, never really done a ball testing. I just, I use it. Um, I was a Pro V1X and for the longest time before that ball came. And Once then, upon a time, I would have been so afraid diving into the pockets of Mac Boucher's golf bag to what I was going to find. No, now I know. Good. You're good. Know There's you're, good stuff uh, in there now. Yeah. Um, so I use the pinned rangefinder. That's their new one. They just sent it to me. Um, it's really, really good. It's cool. It's not a battery, so you can charge it, which I like. Um, it's not kind of the bushnell where the battery can die once in a while. It's right. um, it's nice that I can just charge it up and it lasts for a lot of rounds. It's got some so. slope stuff, some adjustment. Yeah. That's really good. There, it's, a, it's a big upgrade from their original one. Their okay. original one um, was good, but this one's even better. So Love it. big fan of that one. Got um, a little pretty, nice little uh, pretty yeah. goodie it's bag. Got the tees and some markers in there. Um, a little wrenchy poo yeah. if you need it. You've got markers, tees, emirates. That's a nice little selection yeah, of tees in there. Selection of tees in there. And then uh, glove and Invictus, um, they're out of Montreal, Canada. This is my custom Invictus. It's got the uh, little slingers. slingers logo on it. And a little rain hood. And that's it. On that yes, side. I keep it light. There's not much in there. I don't pack it full of garbage. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. Little uh, shout out to the boys at Primo. Yes, Primo, that's all my uh, shorts and pants I wear are Primo. And yeah. they uh, sent me those towels, so. Yeah. Very, very cool. Okay. Guys, that's that's Max. What's in the bag? What's uh, around the bag? We're going to do something a little different. We're actually going to we're going to hit some shots uh, as we go here on the tee, a little further forward here onto the fairway with some irons, and then we're going to get up to the green and hit some wedges too. So, um, love it. We're going to overhaul it though. Yeah. We think. Yeah, I think there's a lot that can be adjusted. I know that, and I've accepted that, and I'm ready to kind of let go of some of the sure. things to to see what is better is out there. So definitely. I mean, yeah. for somebody in the industry. Um, and someone who has companies really looking for you to play their stuff now. This is a testament to you playing what works, Yeah. right? So there's, you could have a brand new everything in here, but there's 2018 irons, there's a 20, 2001 fairy wood, probably older than that, 1992. Yeah, it's old, really old. Um, there's a brand new 2022 stuff in there. You know, you're just playing literally what works for yeah, you. Yeah, I, I, again, I use anything as long as it's, um, it looks good to me, and, and that's that's the main thing. If it looks good, and then obviously I want to start trying to, to look into the numbers a little bit more. Love it, love it. Okay, stay tuned for that, guys. We'll dive into the numbers with Mac. Uh, that's in, that's what's in the bag for now. Stay tuned for part two, we'll call it. Yeah. And we'll see you again soon.